all right guys welcome back to the channel today we're gonna be working with this brand new Vallejo candy paint check it out candy orange 62.073 premium airbrush color so Vallejo recommends that you spray this with a 0.4 I believe needle 15 to 20 psi I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do one with a 0.3 needle. I'm going to thin, it, thin the paint. And I'm going to be using 30 PSI. And another one I'm going to use. So this is the cheap uh, airbrush with 0.3 needle. The other one I'm going to do it with a trigger airbrush using a 0.5 uh, needle. We're going to be mixing it up. So let's fix everything over here and start painting. All right, so let's take a closer look here at uh, what we're going to be working with. This is a Volkswagen drag bus. You can see I polished it, but there's a lot of imperfections when you polish, and it can lead to toning of the paint. This other one, if you see previous video, I'm going to put up a, uh, a link to the playlist of this truck right here, up in the corner. I airbrushed it with this uh, liquor chrome molotone. On that playlist, you're going to find uh, all the how-tos on how you go about painting molotone chrome paint. So with the air, uh, with Vallejo paint, it is very important that you shake your paint. Let's get on shaking and get on painting. All right, so the uh, the pickup airbrush thinner. This is basically, it's gonna come down to you knowing your airbrush. And I just added a few drops of the thinner first. That's a very important step or unless you mix the paint in a separate cup. Here I'm adding a lot of paint. I'm not gonna use it all, but I just wanna make sure that the consistency of the paint is what I need for it to come out of the airbrush. You see the bubbles down there? That's uh, the airbrush cleaner that I use. I use a small brush there just to make sure everything's mixed it's very simple to use this paint and by the way it's uh, acrylic polyurethane no solvents it does not smell perfect for painting indoors which is the whole purpose of me uh, buying all these paints to try out so what I do is I do a light coat I don't want anything and you know another paint to puddle up and uh, what I do is I, I have a hair dryer close by I just hit it with the hair dryer every time I do one coat that's the tunnel cover on the back. I'm holding it with a with a screw that has some tacky tacky clay. It just holds it in place. So that's the second coat. I've already hit it with the hair dryer. And if you haven't tell, haven't noticed, I'm gonna do a fade. So I'm gonna be using another color pretty soon here. I don't, I really don't like painting on camera because it's very difficult for me to see what I'm doing, especially if I hold the the piece with the forceps because I like how I can turn it around 
but it does not make for a very good uh, tool to be to record with. sure that I have enough blue paint if you're wondering the Molotov does not have a clear coat on top I'm painting right on top of the Molotov so there I'm using the violet I added a little bit of the blue just to make sure that uh, the violet has some of that blue you know uh, I don't want I don't want the transition to be like really strong I want it to slowly change color so here's the BW bus you can see all the toning so when you polish all these corners, you really can't polish. If you paint it like this, you're going to have different uh, color because of the paint. You know, it's trans translucent. So here is the metallic medium that they supply with this. Or they don't supply it. You have to buy it separately. It's perfect if you're painting like a plastic piece or in this case, this metal casting it has a lot of small crevices where you really can't polish it so the best way is to use some kind of medium that will give you a uniform color all around usually if I'm doing rattle can I use the duplicolor base coat if I'm doing a, a red line restoration I would use the red line shop base coat This is kind of in between of the duplicolor and and that redline shop uh, base coat. So there you can see I'm using a different airbrush. This is a 0.5 needle airbrush. I did not thin it down it's straight from the bottle. And I'm repeating the same process as before. I hit it with one coat, then I go and uh, I use the hair dryer to dry it up kind of quickly. That's about two or three coats of that uh, metallic medium. See how it turned out. So we have no toning now. Everything is the same color. Now I'm going to add some uh, Sharpie details. I'm going to paint the headlights and all the lights. Just so you can see that this paint is translucent. Just like the red light, the, the Spectre Flam paint. Exactly the same thing. Of course I wouldn't restore a car with this paint because they're not the same colors but to do customs it works very nice so I'm gonna start with the orange candy orange as you can see straight from the bottle to the airbrush again this airbrush has a 0.5 needle check it out Again, I'm fighting with the space to stay in, in in the camera. It's just very uncomfortable. I usually paint standing up. Here I'm sitting down in front and I got a camera in front. So that's one coat. Let's do the other coat.
get all those little uh, crevices in the back. So now I'm using the candy red straight from the bottle, I'm not thinning it down. And again, I'm using 30 PSI. They do recommend that you use 15 to 20, but I prefer to do it uh, 30 PSI. I noticed that this paint is kind of pink. And that pink color, you know, was not matching up to the orange. So again, what I did is, same thing as before, I added some of the orange to the red and I've made a mess as you can see in the background there by adding that little bit of orange it changes the color and of course you could also see that you could blend and make whatever color you like with uh, with these type of paints which is awesome because you can see that the red got a little bit darker and another thing I noticed with this paint is that you really can't trust how you see it at this point because when it dries out, it'll look a little bit darker. So keep that in mind. You can see that it's no longer pink. It's more of a, a red. I look uh, I really like how it looks now I'm gonna hit it with this uh, their gloss varnish I haven't tried this one out either again 0.5 needle there I made another mess they do recommend that you wait four hours between coats. I don't have that kind of time. I start painting. I, I want to go from nothing to finish all in one shot. So I do the same process. I do one light coat. I use the hair dryer and I come back with another coat. At this point, I did not know how how it's gonna look, cause I kept seeing that every time I dried it out, I right there I ran out of clear coat, so I'm adding a little bit more, which is perfect, cause I don't have to thin it down. I just put it straight in the airbrush. I end up doing it three times, three coats. <laughs> Every time I hit a coat, I will apply it thicker. That's how it looks. About 10 minutes after doing the last coat. So there, I just put it away until the next day. All right, so for the pickup truck, I use one of my favorites, the main wax polyurethane. There, I messed up again too uncomfortable I was too close and I'll show you at the end what I mean you can kind of see it where I messed up if you look closely here's the pickup truck I end up doing about two coats this thing works it works very nice so about two coats, I, I I do the pickup truck, and now I just get ready to show you the final product. All right, guys, are you ready? Check it out. I changed the windshield. <clears throat> Originally, it was uh, the yellow one. I use a blue one from another one 
because the yellow one was broken again if you watch previous videos you understand and this is why I hate painting on camera see this I was too close when I hit it with the with the clear coat so that ought to serve as a reminder but other than that look at this beauty look at the dualies GMC the base as you can see it was chrome with the uh, molotov and then I clear coated so it's just like another metal surface if you keep touching it with your hand it'll get dull look at that so that was the main wax clear coat right look at this look at that face look at that sheen look at that that looks awesome so for painting indoors that looks amazing amazing I let it sit overnight I guess if I waited the four hours and I hit it again with more of that uh, Vallejo gloss varnish it will look more shiny I guess but right there uh, it looks perfect I didn't think it was going to end up like this again I ended up leaving it overnight and when I grabbed it to put it back together I was very surprised yes so you remember you got the, the Vallejo candy paint doesn't smell you can paint indoors and that clear coat as long as you have the proper tool the uh, I used a 0.5 needle airbrush you don't have to thin it and of course with the clear coat it just doesn't it, it doesn't run a react when you clear uh, when you thin it so the clear coat has to be brushed with a 0.5 needle airbrush check that out and look at this the guy that 3 printed other parts did that one too I can show customs it's just another ton of cover I think it looks amazing so I'll put up some pictures here at the end I put pictures on my Instagram make sure you follow me on Instagram make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos let me know what you think of this Vallejo candy paint that's gonna be it thank you for watching peace out